another episode of the Edmonds Moms Room podcast. We are so delighted today to have Kendra Long of Northwest Women's Injury Firm with us today. And thank you for being here, Kendra. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about you and your practice and how you help women. Yeah. So I first got into personal injury work in 2008. I was in law school at the time and I really loved it. I loved that I was representing individual people as opposed to corporations or big entities. Like for people, $100,000 settlement is a big difference in their life, you know, when they're injured and they can't work and they're at risk of losing their home and drowning in medical bills. So I just felt really compelled to keep doing this. So after graduating law school in 2010, I just, I have always worked in personal injury. And so I'd worked with my husband for a number of years and we have a practice together. He's a personal injury attorney. And last year we were chatting and I said, I think I'm going to start my own law firm. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, like what kind, you know? And he said, we're both personal injury attorneys. And Um, I said, I want a personal injury firm, but I want a personal injury firm dedicated to representing women and children. And so as we started talking about it, as I started like thinking about it, women just have really different injuries than men. What I see them have in their medical records when I'm reading those, what I hear them talking about, they have different injuries. They have different lives. They have different complications to their lives, you know, like they have children that they're picking up. They have children that they have to take to doctor's appointments when doctors post signs all over their office, please don't bring children without appointments, you know, and they can't go because they have kids. And it just, it really spoke to me. It spoke to me as a mother and it spoke to me as a woman. And I thought, you know, I just want to, I want to help this, this group. I love this group. I, I can do more if I just have a firm that focuses on this group. So I did it. And I do. (laughs) That's amazing. That is so cool. Um, And obviously speaks like so close to home for me and like our practice here. So I just, I'm so happy to know that there's a law firm that focuses just on helping women. Cause you're right. Our bodies are so different. The injuries are so different. Um, So it's nice that like you specialize specifically in helping women with those injuries um, and like their settlements and everything. So will you talk a little bit about I guess, yeah, talk more about it. Yeah, and kind of talk about the process. So I can talk about how women find me typically and kind of where they come in. So typically women come to me after they've been injured by somebody else. So I work in personal injury, so that means that I work with people who have been injured, but it's not their fault. Um, So this can be a classic car accident situation. This can be like a slip and trip and fall in a store or restaurant. Um, Sometimes injuries are really unusual. You know, you're at somebody's house and you're on the deck and it just collapses and you go down with it, right? Like you didn't ask for this. You didn't get to repair the deck. It just happens. Um, Sometimes I work with situations where you're at a restaurant and maybe um, an employee is spying on you in the bathroom or you're in a medical office and a member of the staff touches you inappropriately. So sometimes I work in cases that are a little more sensitive like that. So, but they come in for me, I'm a personal injury attorney. We don't charge people like a divorce attorney or a probate attorney. Um, We only get paid if we recover for our clients. So we take on We take on everything for them. So I tell my client when they come in and they sign up that their only job is to get better. All the insurance communications, I'll do that. If there is an unpaid bill that you get in the mail, please, please let me know so that I can make sure that it gets paid by your insurance company. I find out where the insurance is so that they can take it to their doctors and get the treatment that they need. Um, Their whole job is to get better. And so after they get better, I'm able to collect all of their medical records, and create a really great demand that I send to the responsible parties insurance company and I demand money. And this is not just for how much medical bills they have, but it's for the effect on their life. So can you still pick up your baby? You know, like so many women come in and they can't pick their child up out of their crib. So they're kind of ninja weighing their way into their child's crib every morning to get their baby out of bed because their spouse has already left for work. Um, it's just, it's just what happens. Like, so yeah, let's see. What was I? Settlement. So most people, you know, like they come in. So we create this great demand letter. 
most cases settle like this. Most things are never litigated. A lot of women come and they say, I'm not litigious, Kendra. I don't want to sue anybody. And no one wants to sue anybody. Very rarely does that actually ever happen. Maybe 5% of cases actually have someone um, that's actually getting sued. Yeah. The vast majority of the time, it's just against, you know, the it's just a claim on the insurance company. Right. And so you just, so like people could come to you to help you, help them get organized in, in that kind of way. Because I find yeah. that so frequently too. Like people just say like, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want anyone, I don't want anyone to have to pay. Like I just, it, but they're in like this nightmare of like trying to track their bills and, you know, like they getting calls 10 times a day from the com- insurance companies or, you know, things the like insurance that. Insurance companies call you all the time because yeah. they want you to talk to them and give a reason to deny your claim. Like, please tell me anything that will give me a reason to deny you or to make it seem like it's kind of your fault or it's a little bit your fault or, um, Oh, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not going to the doctor. Oh, you haven't been back to the doctor. Well, you must not really be that injured because you would have gone back if you would have been injured. But really it's like, I can't go because I have three kids at home and my doctor says not to bring kids without appointments. Like it's a really, people have reasons for, you know, all the things that they do, but the insurance companies don't understand them. So yeah, it's my, it's my job to translate them into, um, a story that the insurance company not only can understand, but will assign monetary value to. Yeah. Because I can't get an apology. I can't get people's time back. You know, people are recovering. I know in your practice, you probably see it. You know, it can take a year for people to get better. It can take longer with serious injuries. And this is time I can't get them back. I can't make your kid a year younger so you can like go chase them around again. Or, you know, I can't, the only thing that the law allows me to recover is money. I can give money and I can give my support and my understanding and peace of mind that it's going to be taken care of that they don't have to call their insurance company and say, why are you denying this bill? Is it the same reason you denied the last one? I don't have the money for it. Um, it's, it's really tough and insurance companies are tough. Yeah. Interesting. That's fascinating. So, cause like I, so many things. Yes. It can take forever, especially if like you do have like a new mom skeleton or like a pregnant, you know, like you're pregnant or like maybe you just miscarried, like your hormones and your joints are still like, in this place of flux and like more instability. So the amount of injury can be much higher, even if you don't have it immediately tomorrow, like you could be paying the price in 10 years, you know, most likely you will be. Um, Exactly. And yeah, that's so fascinating. So how do you kind of differentiate between like, what, what about someone's starting point? So like, say you do have this pregnant mom who is, maybe she like got in a car accident and she's actually not even feeling pain, or maybe it's just like a little bit of pain, but like, there's so many deficits. There's so many, dis- there's so much dysfunction and um, she has, you know, cortisone on her, her side right now, just naturally flowing. So she's not going to feel that pain, but then postpartum, it like become, comes out of vengeance. Like, yeah. how, how do you kind of like advocate and this might not even be like this conversation, but I just, it is really interesting. Yeah. So individuals are liable for the harm that they cause you. So they take you as they find you. They don't get to say pregnant women, for example, are more likely to get into car accidents than non-pregnant women. They are just statistically more likely to be involved in car accidents after their second trimester because of the anatomy of a pregnant woman and how a seatbelt fits and how, you know, with a pregnant body, like there's less room between the steering wheel and the seat and, you know, your body. Pregnant women suffer greater injuries in car accidents. And then they also have the baby to worry about. So there's different injuries that happen in that scenario too. So they're more likely to get in accidents. They're more likely to be injured in accidents. And, you know, now you have baby checkups and things like that as well. So in, individuals that harm you have to pay for the harm that they cause. They don't get to say, okay, I only want to harm a non-pregnant woman because eh, it's less expensive because, you know, she doesn't have a baby and all that jazz. No, you get to take the person as you find them. If you have somebody that already has a chronic back condition, but their back condition is worsened because you rear-ended them, 
you have to pay for that. Like you don't have to pay for the, their whole back condition, but you know, doctors opine about how much their condition has worsened based on the trauma that has happened to them. So it's similar, you know, and many people do not feel the effects of an accident right away because your body's flowing with hormones and adrenaline that makes you like, okay, we're okay. We got to get out of here. We're in danger. But then a week later, they're like, oh my gosh, my neck still hurts so bad. Like the neck is one for women, right? Like the musculature in the, in a female's neck is not as thick as in a man's, but our heads weigh about the same. So whiplash injuries are particularly profound for women. Um, they have a lot, but they wait because that's what reasonable people do, right? Like people don't run off to the doctor right away because that, that's what you do. Like if you're just, you know, like chasing after a frivolous lawsuit, right? Every time tort reform comes around, we see that, but most people wait and they try to like ice and they try to use heat and they take ibuprofen and they try to get better on their own. And then a few weeks passes and they're like, Oh my God, I'm still in so much pain. And that's when they're starting to seek out medical care. Yeah. I find for most women, uh, that's kind of the path that they take. Um, and so you can look at the condition that they were in before their accident, you know, like with a pregnant person, like a lot of pregnant women have back pain, but did they have back pain that, before they were pregnant or is this kind of like a pregnancy condition related back pain after they give birth? Is this something that's resolving itself? No. Okay. Like we can say that this is because they were just rear-ended two months ago and they're still in this, you know, chronic pain now. Um, so we kind of tease it out, but we really need doctors. We need doctors to do that. Right. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a medical expert. I don't know. I'm just a lawyer, but having a good doctor on your side who takes thorough histories, who really does detailed exams and who charts really, really well. Like that's one of the biggest things that I see when I'm reading chart, like medical records is my client says, but I told my doctor, blah, blah, blah. And I know I told him that in October and it's like, well, they didn't put it in your chart. So if you, you have to have a doctor that like understands that it's important to chart this if you have been harmed by somebody else. And sometimes that's just communicating like, please make sure this is in my records. And sometimes that's just doctor education and knowing like you have to put more of this like blood pressure and vitals in there. Like mm -hmm. if they say that they've been in an accident and they're hurting because of it, like you gotta, you gotta put that in there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, interesting. So how, from, how do you say that having you or your firm on someone's case enhances their life? <laughs> I take away the stress. I yeah. do. I take away all the stress so that people can just focus on getting better. It, the accident is not going to go away. Ignoring it is not going to go away. Ignoring the insurance companies calling you will not make them stop calling you. Ignoring the EOBs that you get saying that they're denying your claim is not going to make them get paid. But it's a lot of work to chase all of that down. It is a full-time job. And women already have full-time jobs, either in their you know classic nine-to-five job, their home-based businesses, their children, their family, healing is a full-time job when you have to go to medical doctors, when you're, you know, going to physical therapy three times a week, and then you're following up with your, you know, doctor, and maybe you're going for massage or chiropractic, like depending on whatever your, your, you know, treatment plan is, it's a lot. It takes a lot and no one has time to do it anymore. So when we come on board, I say that they just get to relax. I do all of it, just send it to me. I take care of it. And their job is just to get better and be with their family because unless they're a hundred percent better, they're, they got to get back. They got to get back to where they were. And that's, that's a lot. So I take everything else. Awesome. That's so good to hear. And I'm sure you, I can only imagine the relief that you provide for people. What would you say that is like too small of a case to like take? Like, cause I feel like so many people are like, well, it's not worth the, worth me getting a lawyer. I'm just yeah. dealing with it. I'm just going to settle. And I'm like, ah, this is like not looking like you should, because yeah. you will be paying the price for this, <laughs> you yeah. know? So there's a few caveats with that. So I, if you have been injured by somebody else and you, it is always worth seeking out the advice of an attorney to see if your case is quote unquote too small. There is no too small of a case. Sometimes people will call me and they'll say something like, okay, I was injured in this car accident 
and I'll say, okay, what kind of treatment did you have? Okay, I went to the ER right after, and then I saw a chiropractor two times, and that's it. Now I feel 100%. And I, I always say, oh, well, okay, this is kind of what you can expect. Like, this is what I think you should do. I can send you, like, I can kind of, like, walk them through that. Because sometimes it does not make sense for me to take 33% of somebody's money when their money is going to be $2,000. Mm-hmm. Other times, insurance companies offer people $2,000 on a case that's really worth $25,000. So they're like, oh, my case is only worth $2,000. It's not worth an attorney. But it's like, that's just what the insurance company is trying to get you to take because that's what they do. They're not your friend. Their job is to protect the interest and the money of the insurance company. They want to pay you as little as possible. And if you don't know, if you don't have an idea of what your case is worth, then you don't know if you're making a good deal or a bad deal. You're going into it totally blind. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not helpful for you. And it's not helpful. It's it's just not going to help you. So I think it's important to talk to an attorney, even if you think your case is too small, so that you can have an idea of like, is my case really this small? Or is the insurance company just telling me my case is this small? And once you sell with the insurance company too, like some of your important benefits in your own insurance, like your PIP benefits, close out because you've already settled and you can't go back. So if you've settled before you're 100% better, or until you've reached maximum medical improvement, you don't get to go back later and say, actually, I had to go through $10,000 more of treatment. I want $10,000 more. That's it. That's all the money you're ever going to get from them. Like there, you don't get a second bite at the apple. Interesting. Interesting. So do you guys do consultations for people? Absolutely. And it's free. You don't have to pay me to talk to me. People can just call. I always answer. So I (laughs) I always answer the phone and I know a lot of law firms have people that will do like um, intake appointments for them. But honestly, I think it's easier if I do my own. I like to do my own intakes. I like to know people. I like to hear where they're calling from. And sometimes I, you know, sometimes the case is small, like it's not going to be worth it to have an attorney involved, but at least then I can give you some helpful tips and tricks and kind of give you a guide. And I always tell people like, if you want me to look at what you wrote after, I'm happy to kind of get, you can email it to me and I'm looking and, I just, I want to make sure that they're getting the best deal because the insurance company is always getting a good deal. They have highly trained people that are evaluating your claims. They put it to a computer and it pops out a number and people without attorneys get way less money than people who have attorneys. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just because people don't know what to ask for or how to present their claim in a way that when it goes through the computer system of the insurance company, that it puts out the max amount of money. Interesting. Um, it's so nice that like you will just give people that peace of mind. Cause even if they, their case isn't worthy of an attorney, at least to like, even just tell them that it's like, okay, then I'm doing the right thing or I'm on right. the right track. So, yeah. Yeah. And just to know like, okay, how can I settle this myself? What should I watch out for? Um, sometimes it's, you know, like I may not take it because I may not have like medical malpractice is one that I get a lot. I may not take it because I don't have any more capacity to handle that particular issue at that moment that they're calling. Um, But other times I can refer to somebody else who could be a really great attorney for that case and, you know, really help them out. And yeah, other times the cases are small and people can handle them themselves. But if you know what you should go in there asking for, then you have a better chance of getting it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Is there, what else do you think it's important for our moms listening to this to know? I, it's really important to take care of yourself and to make yourself a priority. And this is something that moms don't do. Moms do not make themselves a priority. They are always at the last on their to-do list. You know, the dogs get vet visits, the kids get their yearly pediatrician visits. You know, moms, moms just don't, they don't have the time to do it. And so the one thing that I'll say that if you have been injured and you are not feeling well, make yourself a priority, make your healing a priority because it is not going to get better with time. Things will only get worse with time. Like it just won't go away. So put in the work to make the appointments for yourself and go do it and be consistent in doing it because you're worthy of doing it and you can't keep everybody else together if you're not feeling good because you just can't, you need to be, you need to be back to your normal self. Yeah. It's, that's such an amazing message. And like, just to tail off that a little bit, like if people get help right away, it can make, it can make things so much better. Cause then you're not building these compensations on top of this injury that then have to be like undone 
for many, for a long, long time, you know, um, it's similar to like, if I see a mom with a birth injury at 15 years after versus five months after, like, it's so mm-hmm. much easier to deal with the five months because you're not having to unpeel all these compensations that the body did to try to help you feel better, but in turn is just making things worse, you know? And so, yeah, it's making other things hurt, right? Like, yeah. cause you've compensated and it happens after injury too. I mean, any injury, right? Like totally. their body compensates to try to protect you and put you back to your normal life but it doesn't mean that it's healthy for you or good for you or not hurting you more. And so getting help is really important and finding doctors who support you, who care about you, who make you feel heard. Like, um, it's really important too. I hear a lot of women and they're going to doctors who they don't feel heard. They feel rushed. They feel embarrassed. They feel shamed. Like, for example, the signs, you know, people that put signs all over their waiting room about not bringing children without appointments. I totally understand that. I get it, right? Nobody wants to be a babysitter. Nobody's receptionist wants to be a babysitter in the medical office. Um, there's liability to worry about. But women go in there and they have their kid because there's no other place for their child to be. And then they feel embarrassed and shamed and they don't tell their doctor the full extent of what's wrong because they think, oh, I have to hurry because my kid is here and they already said they shouldn't be here. And like, they feel like they're burdening their healthcare professional and they shouldn't feel that way because healthcare professionals work for their clients and they work for the betterment of their clients. And so I always tell my clients to please, please tell your doctor everything that you're feeling because I, I can't help. If it's not documented, I can't help if you've not told them. So if you're having headaches and you have never had headaches before, tell your doctor. If you're feeling tingling in your legs and that is not normal for you, tell your doctor. It's And, and don't be embarrassed to tell your doctor. Just, just tell it all to them. They've heard it all before. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's good and powerful. Mm-hmm. Such a good message. And I think your your storytelling is so important because... I just think so many moms can connect with everything that you're saying, (laughs) you know, on a wide front. Yeah. Storytelling is important in women's claims. Like women who are stay-at-home moms, for example, don't have that typical lost wage component that men would have that men, that makes men's claims more valuable, right? So you've lost wages, you've lost time from work. Like this is a lot of, it adds up to a lot of money at the end of a claim. And women don't have that, but women's work, even if it's unpaid, is equally as valuable. And so there has to be a story there about what this impact looks like, what this has done to her family, how her family has changed, what she has had to do to compensate, to carry on. Um, And I feel like that story gets told with our law firm really well, where I feel like traditional law firms miss that because it's not like one of those medical bills, lost wages, you know, um, out of pocket expenses. It's kind of a softer area, but I feel like it matters. It paints the story. And if a case ever goes to trial, it's that story that convinces jurors. It's not, you know, how much medical bills and this and that you have, like people connect to people and that story of a mom who's taking care of her kids and cleaning bathrooms and she can't vacuum anymore. That's a big one I hear vacuuming. Um, Can't vacuum anymore. These are all such powerful parts of a story that have to be told. Like it's if you are, you know, if that's how you're spending your day. Yeah. I think that's so important because you are not just, you're validating the experience, which then just like helps the healing on so many levels. And that is just very, I think under, not necessarily undervalued, but just not spoken about. And if you're going to, and not saying that if you're going to some law firm to get help that they don't have children, they don't know what this is like. And then you're trying to tell somebody what you're experiencing, you know, and they just want these clear cut answers. And you're like, I can't, I, I don't know. Like all I know is like, I'm up with my baby who I can't hold and nurse because you know, like whatever. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, yeah, I think that's so important to have someone who like truly holistically gets the picture. Um, and or I'm injured when I'm pregnant and I am ter- Like they tell me the baby's okay, but I'm terrified. And you're living in this fear for months and months and months and months until your baby is born and starts meeting milestones because you're so worried that like 
something has happened. Even, even if medical doctors have taken a look at you and they're telling you it's okay, but you were living with this fear, like, and for women, especially women have four and a half times the rate of PTSD after accidents that men do. So I had never had a man tell me about um, experiencing PTSD until I started my practice. Uh, but women told me that all the time, you know, like I can't, I can't drive by there anymore. Oh, I can't talk to that person anymore. I can't go over here. But it just was so triggering for them to like relive this. So especially pregnant women who were injured, it was like so traumatic. It was, it was, it was very traumatic. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. It's really great. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if someone wants to reach out to you, how do they contact you? Yeah. So you can find me um, online, Northwest Women's Injury Law, uh, com. You can also put nwinjurylaw.com. Um, and they can call me 425-818-5331. I'm always around. I always pick up. I always tell people I call back in... 24 hours or less. So if you call me, you will definitely get a call back the same day. Um, yeah. Right awesome. now everything's kind of virtual, but cool. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. We in your office is in Edmonds. I'm in Edmonds. Yeah. I'm right beside the ferry terminal. So, um, it works out really well. Yeah. I'm in that building right beside the ferry terminal. It's great. Um, but I know that women have really busy chaotic lives. So frankly, even before COVID, like I met a lot of my clients virtually, some of them I have never met before in real life. Like we've met online, but not in real life. Um, so I know that no one wants to spend their free time, like traveling to a lawyer's office, sitting down in a lawyer's office. So if it's easier, like I meet clients virtually, I'm happy to go to their house if they're comfortable with that or meet in a third party location, if that's easier for them. Um, yeah, it's tough. We're all busy. And I know that nobody wants to have to drag their kids one more place and unbuckle and buckle back in. <laughs> they just don't want to have to do one more thing. So yeah. Well, Kendra, this is so awesome. And I'm really excited to have you as a resource for my clients. I think yeah. you are like the perfect link for like <laughs> what is missing when I need to like refer someone to get some legal, you know, assistance with things. So when it yeah. comes to personal well, history. So. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much. This was such a pleasure meeting you and chatting with you. And I'm excited for thank having you. you as a resource. Oh, well, thank you very much. Mom's Room podcast is brought to you by Body Motion Physical Therapy. We help women through pregnancy and beyond so they can live active, confident, and healthy lives.